Gradients cause ions to move across cell membranes. This results in a separation of charge across the membrane, which in turn creates an electrical potential or force. The electrical potential is called the membrane potential. Your goals for learning are to know the relative concentration of ions inside and outside of cells, to recognize that cells have selective permeability for ions, to understand the equilibrium potential for potassium, to understand that sodium and potassium determine the resting membrane potential, to realize that the sodium-potassium pump maintains the resting membrane potential. Here's what you need to know. The definitions of diffusion, ion, anion, and cation. What ion channels are and how they work. That opposite charges attract and like charges repel each other. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. To review Recall that the intracellular concentrations of sodium, potassium, and chloride differ from their concentrations outside the cell in the extracellular fluid. You can measure ionic concentrations in a neuron by using the imaginary concentration meter. First, click an ion button on the concentration meter, then drag the probe either to the extracellular fluid outside the cell or to the inside of the cell. When you release the mouse, the concentration value of the ion will appear in its appropriate place in the meter. Repeat for each ion. Inside the cell, the concentration of positive potassium ions is high. It is balanced by a high concentration of negatively charged proteins and other anions. In the extracellular fluid outside the cell, the concentration of positive sodium ions is high. It is balanced by a high concentration of negative chloride ions. Ions are not soluble in the lipid bilayer they can only cross cell membranes by passing through watery pores called ion channels. If a cell has channels for a particular ion, we say it is permeable to that ion. Since most cells are permeable to some ions but not to others, they exhibit selective permeability. As drawn here, this cell membrane is impermeable to ions. Click the potassium channel to make the cell permeable to potassium. This cell is permeable to potassium. Many cells in the body are selectively permeable only to potassium. Now click the sodium channel to make the cell permeable to sodium. Excitable cells are very permeable to potassium and slightly permeable to sodium. Now click the chloride channel to make the cell permeable to chloride. Neurons are selectively permeable to potassium, sodium, and chloride. Cells are impermeable to the negatively charged proteins and other large anions found inside them. These anions are too large to pass through the cell membrane. The permeability of a cell for a particular ion depends on the number of channels for that ion and the ease with which the ion can move through the channels. For example, if an ion is small compared to the size of an ion channel, it goes through easily. Permeability can be increased by increasing the number of channels for a given ion. This cell is permeable to potassium. Let's see how adding or removing ion channels changes the permeability of the cell to potassium. Click any channel to add it to the cell membrane. To remove a channel, click and drag it out of the membrane.
You have learned that some channels have gates that may be either open or closed. The permeability of a cell for a given ion increases when gated channels for that ion are opened. This is the mechanism used by the nervous system to produce rapid changes in membrane permeability. Click a closed potassium channel to observe this effect. We are studying neurons, but before we talk about how ions move across neuronal cell membranes, let's talk about a simpler cell, one that is permeable to only one ion. Many of the cells of the body are like this simple, non-excitable cell. When we understand it, we will learn how neurons are different because they are permeable to several ions. This cell is selectively permeable only to potassium. Gradients cause ions to move. Potassium will diffuse down its concentration gradient. That is from the area where its concentration is high to the area where its concentration is low. Indicate the direction in which potassium will move by clicking a potassium ion and dragging it to a channel. Correct! Potassium diffuses out of the cell. The concentration gradient acts as a chemical force that pushes potassium out of the cell. The width of the arrow represents the relative strength of the chemical force. Click inside the cell to observe the effect of the potassium concentration gradient. As potassium ions diffuse out of the cell, they accumulate on the outside surface of the cell membrane, making it more positive than the inside surface of the membrane. This results in a separation of charge across the cell membrane. Click the membrane to see the charge separation across the whole cell membrane. Here, ions inside and outside the cell are represented only by plus and minus symbols to indicate their charges. There is a net positive charge on the outside of the cell membrane and a net negative charge on the inside. This separation of charge creates an electrical potential across the cell membrane. Imagine that we put our cell in a bath of extracellular fluid and watch potassium diffuse out. As potassium diffuses out, an electrical potential begins to develop. Since opposite charges attract each other, the developing electrical potential begins to pull potassium back into the cell. Thus, the electrical potential, or voltage, acts as a force that opposes the diffusion of potassium out of the cell. The width of the arrow represents the relative strength of the electrical force. Click a potassium channel to continue. As potassium continues to diffuse down its concentration gradient, the developing electrical potential or force increases. Click a potassium channel to continue. Potassium will continue to diffuse out until the electrical potential is equal but opposite to the force from the concentration gradient. Click a potassium channel to continue. The electrical potential across the cell membrane is called the membrane potential. This potential is measured in millivolts. As you have seen, the inside of the cell is negative. Click the voltmeter to measure the membrane potential. As we've seen, a simple non-excitable cell has a concentration of 150 millimolar potassium inside 
and 5 millimolar potassium outside. At these concentrations, the chemical and electrical forces on potassium are equal and opposite when the membrane potential is minus 90 millivolts. At this special membrane potential, potassium is at equilibrium. This is called the equilibrium potential for potassium. Recall that neurons are permeable to more than one ion. Let's see how the membrane potential in such cells differs from the membrane potential in simple cells that are permeable only to potassium. Click the neuron to continue. When neurons are not generating electrical signals, we say they are at rest. Resting neurons are very permeable to potassium and only slightly permeable to sodium. They are also permeable to chloride, but since it contributes little to the resting membrane potential, we will not consider it further. Click the membrane to continue. We have observed the movement of potassium ions across a very permeable cell membrane. Now let's examine movement of sodium. Click a sodium ion and drag it to the appropriate channel to show it diffusing down its concentration gradient. The width of the arrow represents the relative strength of the chemical force. In neurons at rest, the membrane potential is called the resting membrane potential. If a neuron were permeable only to potassium, its resting membrane potential would be minus 90 millivolts, the equilibrium potential for potassium. However, resting neurons are also slightly permeable to sodium, and the electrochemical gradient for sodium causes it to move into the cell. Click the voltmeter to see the value for the resting membrane potential of the neuron. The resting membrane potential results from the movements of both sodium and potassium ions. The positively charged sodium ions that have entered the neuron make the membrane potential more positive than minus 90 millivolts, which is the equilibrium potential for potassium. For many neurons, the resting membrane potential is close to minus 70 millivolts. When the resting membrane potential is not equal to the potassium equilibrium potential, the forces acting on potassium are no longer equal and opposite. At minus 70 millivolts, the chemical force pushing potassium out of the cell is greater than the electrical force pulling potassium back into the neuron, but only a little bit. The force on potassium is small, but the neuron is very permeable to potassium. As a result, a small amount of potassium moves continuously out of the neuron. At minus 70 millivolts, the force on sodium is very large, but the neuron is only slightly permeable to sodium. As a result, a small amount of sodium moves continuously into the neuron. At minus 70 millivolts, the resting membrane potential, potassium leaks out of the neuron and sodium leaks into the neuron. Just as a boat that begins to leak will eventually sink, a leaking neuron will eventually fail to function. If ions continue to leak, the neuron will be unable to communicate. If the ion leaks continue, the concentration gradients for sodium and potassium will decrease. As the concentration gradients decrease, the membrane potential moves toward zero. When there are no longer any chemical or electrical forces to move ions across the membrane, the neuron cannot send or receive the electrical signals it needs to communicate. The captain can keep her boat afloat by bailing water out as fast as it enters. Neurons can prevent the potassium and sodium gradients from running down by transporting potassium back into the cell and sodium back out of the cell.
course, the neuron doesn't use buckets to move ions. A membrane enzyme called the sodium-potassium pump actively transports ions to compensate for the sodium and potassium leaks. This pump uses the energy of ATP to move sodium and potassium against their electrochemical gradients. Three sodium ions are pumped out of the neuron for every two potassium ions that are pumped in. Click the pump to see it work. Click the membrane to continue. Here's a summary of what we've covered. The concentrations of sodium and chloride are high outside cells in the extracellular fluid, and the concentrations of potassium and organic anions are high inside cells. The permeability of a cell for ions depends on the number and type of ion channels in the cell membrane. The electrical and chemical forces for a particular ion combine to become a single force. The electrochemical gradient which causes the movement of that ion across the cell membrane. In simple, non-excitable cells, the membrane potential depends only on potassium. Potassium comes to equilibrium when the membrane potential for the cell is minus 90 millivolts. The resting membrane potential in neurons depends on the distribution of sodium as well as potassium across the cell membrane. Resting membrane potentials in neurons are commonly around minus 70 millivolts. The sodium-potassium pump is essential for maintaining the resting membrane potential in neurons.